Okay, back here at the diamond grit stone. It's an easy lap that's quite wore down and it's really fun. So I kind of burnt the top of the tool here a little bit. So the first thing I do is start working the top of that tool. And by the way, this is standard AR8 uh, bit. <clears throat> and uh, let me see if I can get something to point with here. Probably throw the rest of this out. <laughs> okay. Now these tools come with side rake here, but they have no back rake. So the first thing I do, and the carbide's kind of thick on these uh, Micro 100, is I give it one to two degrees uh, back rake. Okay, and then sometimes increase the side rake. Okay, so with the cutter grinder, you got control of every surface on here the top, front, side. Okay, you can do anything you want. The hardest thing to do with the machine is tiny radiuses. So, and I vary them. And uh, I'm working on the axle sign here. A lot of times on the Monarch 10 EE with the same tool and pre-hard, I would use like a 10 thousandths radius, but the feed is coarser on the axle sign, so I'm working uh, around a 25 thousandths nose radius. And I establish that by doing it by hand. And <clears throat> checking it with this little comparator, little hand comparator. Works great, it's got a grid in there, it's got these, uh, I think, uh, where are those dots? Let me see where they, there they are. I don't know if you can see, something like that. See, there's these dots, and I can get that nose over to them, or these circles, and get a good guesstimation. So that's how that works. So I take that, uh, all the burnt looking stuff in it. I don't need to regrind the top. I knocked it back from the front. See, that burnt stuff's coming off. Let's do it to the other one. See that dark area? Right on the tip, we're gonna take that off first thing. There might be something hiding under it. But this is really good carbide. Now, this stuff will wear rather than chip. And uh, I made a cut. I'll try to <laughs> get it in the video showing one of these sparking. And that's when the radius starts crumbling away. But a, a standard tool, uh, lesser quality tool than this, the entire, the, it would just shear the tip off and you'd have to grind it back like 30 thousandths instead of 10. See that, that's coming clean now. Okay, then I start working the radius. I look at it, look at the edge of the carbide and get it on that stone and then start working. And I kind of bring it, uh, you know, it, it's not, carbide is, <laughs> it's more like, uh, uh, it's more like concrete than metal, <laughs> or rock. So it's a little bit different. But what I'm doing is I'm working that radius in, and I'm bringing the tool, I'm, I'm working the stone that way. And I can feel, I can feel the edge of that, and plus I can see it as I start working that radius in. And it doesn't take very long because the radius is so small. Ah, yeah. I'm contemplating getting uh, a Pratt & Whitney style uh, version of the Cincinnati mono set. They're a little more compact and real simple machines, and they're for grinding radiuses. They'd be a good companion for this one. 
The mono sets are, are quite a bit heavy machine and they're more expensive. All right. Oh, okay, I need to hit this uh, just a little bit. I can see a, a little bit of uh, likely metal built up right on that tip. That's gone away. It's probably hard to see that if I catch the light. Maybe you can see that radius starting to form there. Now I'm coming from the other side. And I can feel that edge. I just roll that tool in until I feel the sharp edge starting to grab that grit. Let's see how sharp it is. I mean that sharp, look at that. Very, very sharp right on that tip. I think that, I better check it. I'll check it, do the other one, we'll get over there and make a cut. But I wanted to show you how I'm creating that radius again. Looking pretty good. You get the gauge on now. Okay, here's my four jaw chuck here, and you can see I added some balance holes here on the rim, and uh, it it helped quite a bit with this chuck. Now, what I'm doing, I've switched to steel, and uh, now I'm looking for as good as I can get in two inches and I've got that mark there too so I'll put this on here I'm getting to where I think it's satisfactory okay so we got that it's on the one there let's move it over here and see where we're at it is let me get it straight on there It is two and a half ten thousandths taper. Maybe a little less. The gauge is kind of finicky. I'm going to slide it back over. Right to the mark. I'm calling it just about two and a half tenths. 
two and a half ten thousandths taper. Now I can reduce that more. I just want to make sure I'm on the right track, and I'll tell you how I did that. Now before I was doing the test in aluminum, okay? And there's not enough rake for cutting aluminum, so it tended to push it away. And the way I got this tool now, I'm looking for the balance of the tool pushing the work away and sucking it in. Because you know if you have a tool with too much of an angle, it'll pull the work right in and break. So that's how I do that. That's how you get that taper out of there. Okay? Yeah, you just got to find the right angle, the right nose radius, and, it, and it's different with different materials and different machines. Now this is a real hard piece of, uh, some kind of pre-hard here. It's not of the highest quality, but it's uh, working for the test. And uh, so I'm uh, quite satisfied that if I have to, I can uh, start working towards a bearing fit with this lathe. I might have to touch it up with a uh, grinding operation, uh, external honing or something. But I don't uh, uh, ever use emery cloth to uh, come to a bearing size. Uh, that's really, really bad practice. But everybody does it except me. That's why they pay me to do it. Because I don't do the stupid stuff. Okay, so I'm very happy. This is this is the best truck I have. Um, the accuracy of the machine is great. You know, it's got a few hitches in it here and there. But I don't know. It's just working pretty good. Okay. So that's good. I could increase that slightly and it also depth of cut. So you kind of balance stuff out a little bit, and that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, find uh, uh, metal you want to work with and uh, stick to it. That's kind of what I did with um, uh, making sleeves and stuff. Hey, Chloe, what are you doing? You're barking out there in the dark. She's going to get people mad at me. Okay, I gotta go uh, take care of that. All right, here's a couple of um, Micro 100 AR8 tools that I use. I, I shorten the shanks because um, it's easier to use in some of the tool holders and plus the way I grind them in the machine. They, they don't need the long way. Um, if you look at the tips here, and it's kind of this camera might not be the best at it but both these tools need to be reground and they just kind of have a little build up on there and uh, kind of a burnt look to them and if you get them under magnification that radius that I created by hand is just real raggedy so um, you can see I'll, I'll put that one cut where you'll see a lot of sparks and uh, that's, that's what happens when the tool tip fails on one of these. Now, cheaper carbide, what happens is, when that happens, it'll just bust the tip of the tool off, okay? So this is some real tough stuff and it holds up. Now, I was getting, why do I use this? Well, I got, I got a uh, insert here, insert tool holder, this is a DNMG332, uh, it's an ISCAR finishing insert and it does a great job, about the minimum cut, uh, depth of cut is about five thousandths and it was causing um, one thousandths uh, taper from the force of it. Um, on the workpiece are some pretty hard, really some quite hard, pretty hard steel. So, we go to a, a standard bit like this because it can get more rake on it. 
smaller radius, adjust the radius, and all that, you know. And instead of pushing the work away, you get it so it starts drawing the work in, but not too much. As you know, when you increase these angles too much, the nose radius too little, the, the tool doesn't last long. So I'm right on the edge here. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm cooking the tips of the tools, trying to find the right depth of cut, the right speed, um, on this axis and lathe, and I'm getting quite a bit closer, plus the right nose uh, radius. So I'll go ahead and grind these two tools, and uh, then I'll have uh, a, a spare handy, and uh, we'll see what we can do for uh, a taper at this point. It, it's a thing that uh, you got to work at a little bit, and uh, I got to find out what this Axelson will do. I know what the Monarch 10 E will do, and that's what you guys got to find out. <laughs> and I think you'll have a good time doing it. Okay, we'll get over there and uh, get these in the grinder and grind them real quick. 